Previously on Accelerate, we reviewed the 2021 Ram TRX, but today we've got the 2022 Genesis G70. I'm excited to review another Genesis because this Genesis in particular is the white collar version of the Stinger. You see, we reviewed the 2021 Stinger and then we reviewed the facelifted 2022 Stinger and this is the facelifted 2022 Genesis G70. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the front, I'm gonna talk about the side, I'm gonna talk about the back, I'm gonna talk about the interior, the updated interior, and I'm gonna talk about the drive. So let's get into it. So it's no secret that this shares the underpinnings of a Kia Stinger. And it's also no secret that this is aesthetically beautiful. This is a beautiful looking vehicle. So I'm really happy that there's two versions that you can buy. Because if you want something that's more sporty looking, you might want to buy the Stinger. If you want something that's elegant, that also has all the underpinnings of the Stinger, which as you can see here, is pretty awesome. And what's pretty awesome is if you subscribe and get us to 100K. Now, I've been asking you guys for like a month and we're not there yet. What's up with that? So in the front of this vehicle, look at the updated sort of facelift they've done here. Now, they do have this massive crest grill that is different than the last one. It does obviously have this quad lamp feature that is on all the new stuff Genesis is putting out. Oh, it's just such a good looking vehicle. It's just so nice, so much nicer than the, than the 2021. This 2022 is beautiful. And this color is called Siberian White. It looks really, really nice at, at night. Now in the studio, it looks sort of like a cloud or some people would call it chalk, but it's a stunner. So under the hood here, we have a 3.3 liter. This is a lie. This is actually twin turbo and they should put twin because it looks so much cooler than just turbo. It's twin because I can see it. There's one turbo right here and there's one turbo on the other side coming off this V6. That makes 368 horsepower, not 365. 368 horsepower and 376 pound feet of torque. This does have an eight speed transmission and it does have drift mode, which is pretty awesome. Now, it does have baffled exhaust, so they do have, you know, open and close exhaust that we can set in the system there, but it makes 368 horsepower and not 365 if you have it off. That's cool. But what's cooler is this. It does have drift mode, as I mentioned, because you can transfer 100% of power to the back wheels. That's exciting. And on the side, let's take a look. It does flow all the way back. You see how these headlights flow all the way back. And then in the back here, it does flow forward. So it kind of merges together the lighting on the side of this car. Ah, oh, I love this car, it's so cool. These things are 19s in the front. And yes, you have Brembo's in the front and the back, 19s. But this is all wheel drive. And generally, they're the same tire size in the front and the back, but not this thing. They got Pilot Sports, which is awesome. 225 40s in the front and in the back you have wider tires. These are 255 35s. That is cool. That is rear wheel drive based, man. This is a rear wheel drive car when it needs to be, which is awesome. I love it. Yes, this has an LSD, obviously. But one doo doo I found is this. Disappointing. This does have front plastic inner fender liners, but it's super weird because it's only in the front of the fender liner. In the back here, it's carpeted. So they thought instead of putting carpet all the way through, they'll put plastic in the front and carpet in the back. So carpeted is insulated. Obviously just the way the gravel hits the back here, that's probably what they're thinking, but I would have expected to have carpet all the way through, especially for insulation noises, even though it's really quiet inside, it's kind of strange. In the back here, we do have carpet and carpet. This is the first time I've ever seen plastic in the front and also carpet in the front, weird. So moving along the side here, this doesn't have like the other one or the old generation, I apologize, is it doesn't have the sort of boomerang line it has here. It just has a sort of inlet down there. It does have sort of a black chrome all the way around now. And it does have sort of shortened windows. It does have sort of a high shoulder line, which I really like. It makes the car look sort of wider. And in terms of width, it doesn't have obvious fender flares, but looking at it from this angle, you can tell they are definitely wider. So you see these mirrors, yes, they are heated. They also fold in, but most importantly, they have a camera here that faces that direction. It's sort of a blind spot camera. So when you're in the cabin and you wanna indicate, 
the digital cluster will show you what this looks like and what that looks like, which is pretty sweet to have. And as we move along here, yes, this does have a a big panoramic or a larger roof than your typical sunroof. Now, it's fairly big here, but inside the car, it's not that big, which is kind of weird. I expect it to be larger in the car, but it's a good size when I look up here. It makes me feel like I have a big sunroof. And coming along the back here, see this back door here doesn't have door closers, keyless door closers, which totally suck. You have them in the front, but give them to me in the back. I want to walk up to the car, and it does do this. When I walk up to the car, it knows that I'm coming because all the lights at night illuminate. I walk up with my key, it knows I'm coming, but I have to touch the front handle. I cannot touch the back handle to get in because if I'm putting stuff in, I'd like to put stuff in the back or the trunk. So the back doesn't do it, the trunk does, and the front doors do. So the doors close pretty well. Like, listen to this. I wouldn't say it's as solid as a German car. It depends what German car, obviously, but a German one built in Germany, not built in the US. But if we move to the back here, you'll see these detail in these taillights. Look, I just love how sharp it is. And it has this 3D effect in these taillights. Genesis has done a really good job with their lighting game. Their lighting game is on point. So you must be asking, is the reverse light hiding here? No, those are the signals. The reverse light is actually down here, which is sort of the new thing with Genesis. They're putting the taillights lower. This, this, this back end is totally different than the last version, and they don't have sort of a logo. They do have this Genesis written down here. But what I would do is I would totally get rid of this four-wheel drive badge. I might keep the 3.3, but I'd definitely get rid of both of these if it was my car, and get rid of that and just leave the Genesis. Speaking of decals though, here's a funny one. Do you think that is twice the G35? Because this is a G70. So this is two times the car than the G35 from Infinity. because to me, this is the new Infinity. This Genesis, the brand, is what Infinity should have done in the first place. This is a great car, guys. I can't emphasize that. We'll check it on the drive, but other stuff, come take a look. On the bottom here, this does have baffled exhaust, as I mentioned. As you see, it's a bit funny with these wider oval exhausts, and you can see both of them in there, but it sounds awesome. Listen to this. So on the back here, take a look at this. This G70 is not a fastback or a Sportback. This is a conventional trunk. Look, by pressing this button here, this does pop the trunk. It is powered though. That's really nice that this price point is powered. Most of them are not. You actually have to list them up yourself. But this one, you can press the button and it'll actually close. Now I'm gonna open this up again just to show you how much space there is. So this might be a concern if you like to have space because when I open this thing up, there's just not a lot of trunk room. It's decent, like it has a good depth, but in terms of height here, it's not that good. Let me get a measuring tape and show you. So in terms of depth here, we have just about 40 inches, which is pretty good. Most of the cars are about 37 and a half to 39. So this is 40, so it has really good length. It's just the opening point that's pretty tight. So I have just about 17 and a half, almost 18 inches of entry point. So I couldn't fit more than two, maybe two and a half large suitcases in here at best. All right, so I'm in the back. Ooh, these seats are fancy. Look at this red stitching. How nice is this? And it's all the way through. And what's even cooler is you don't have to spend any more money to get red seat belts. Hello, German cars, trying to get me for my red seat belts. You have to wait like four months to get in an individual program to get red seat belts, but not here. Oh, just so nice. The quality is really good. Just check the quality out of this stuff. It does have three increments of heated seats on this side and on this side. It's a little bit tighter here. So I'm five, eight and a half, and I'm just about touching, pretty much almost touching in the back here. Now, unfortunately, this is not a sport back or a, or a lift back, as I mentioned. So yes, you do have this low sort of headroom, but no, I don't get the extra trunk space. I do have a cool suede liner back here. And again, for that space, they do make a shooting brake in Europe. We just won't get them in North America, unfortunately. Too bad. Now, in terms of technology, it does have a USB in the back, not USB-C, just one single USB. And if I wanted some more leg room for the passenger, I have buttons here that I can slide forward which is pretty cool. Now they've taken this from obviously some of their other products they have in the pipeline, but it's nice to see that you can move that back and forth instead of yelling at the person in front saying, move your chair forward, you know? Hmm, what other stuff do I like about this thing? The suede headliner. Let's get to the front. All right, so I am in the 2022 G70. Now, yes, I might complain that the doors aren't as solid but the seats sure as are. They are really, really nice. They do have powered leg extensions, so they slide out full power. It's not a manually handy one like some of its other competitors. These seats close you in. They're just really, really good seats. 
if I should say that again, really quality seats. Steering wheel is also really nice. I like the fact this is a three spoke steering wheel. I know Genesis has the more luxury steering wheels, but on this G70, I like the fact that it's sporty because that is who they're after. Even though to me, they should really focus on all luxury, which they do here. Like there's a lot of luxury pieces. This looks a little bit dated. I wouldn't say that it's up to date with some of the other stuff they have, probably because this is an older build, because obviously they can't all build them at the exact same time. This is facelifted, updated, but I wouldn't say it's a full, full update. Not like the new stuff, not like the GV70. The GV70 is beautiful inside. I would say this is very good, but I would say this is an excellent daily driver. I've driven this now for four days and I will say it's awesome. It's just, it's the steering is just so good. I cannot emphasize how good the steering, the balance of the car is. I'm gonna get that in the drive, but as far as interior here goes, it's nice, it's comfortable. Air conditioning works very, very well. Steering system is pretty awesome. I like all the suede stuff. I really like driving a car because you can kind of toss it around and just very easy to drive. It does have different driving modes. It does have launch control and drift mode, which we'll show you in a minute. All the buttons are fairly straightforward, kind of plasticky a little bit kind of very straightforward. Really, this is from IKEA. It does have the larger screen, which is very easy to use. Nothing totally out there, but it's obviously typical high-end um, Kia, Hyundai, Genesis product. It's just very easy to use. I just find their infotainment systems awesome. Now, because we've done newer Genesis's, we're sort of spoiled to the fact that we, we our expectation is like just so high. Now, because when I click on the radio as an example. This is the older Kia stuff. And even though it's so good, so clean, very easy to use, our expectation is just so high that I can't be a hair disappointed with when I see this, even though it's still excellent. But I can be disappointed about this digital cluster. Now, we don't have the full digital dash here in Canada. We simply have half a dash, an eight inch screen here. Now, when I indicate, you will see that it does show you your blind spot there, except here's the funny part. The steering wheel kind of blocks half of it when I go left or right, and it also kind of throws me off because when I'm going left, I don't really want to look on the right-hand side of my digital driver cluster. I want to look at the left side of my digital driver cluster. And if I'm being super picky, I would really like to see the tack being analog and not the speedometer being analog because the digital tack looks just really weird to me. I'd like to see a digital speedometer and an analog tack, if that makes any sense. This is what I will say about the product. It's basically, for me, it's about the drive. The steering is awesome. Suspension is excellent with this product. And the infotainment is very straightforward, much better than most German stuff. It's just very easy to use. And on that, let's take it for a drive. We're gonna start with the video with launch control, but there's five different driving modes. You've got Eco, Comfort, Sport, Sport Plus, and Custom. So, this is kind of weird. In most cars, when I go to Sport or Sport Plus, the exhaust, the baffles open up and you can hear it and the RPM sort of goes up a bit. In this one, when I go to Sport Plus, it automatically switches off traction control, but the RPM stays exactly the same. I would expect that it to just sort of rise up a little bit. But here's the cool part. I just hold the ESP down or stability program down. It'll disable it. I'm on the brake, auto hold. It says launch control ready and let's go. Smooth. pretty quick it's smooth right so these smooth cars you can't really tell how fast you're going until you look at the speedometer which I would have preferred to have in digital and the tack in analog as I mentioned but mid power let's see how mid power is so now it's shifting lower gears and on the, on the throttle you know where I noticed it had a lot of power is like when I was just sort of cruising at about 30 kilometers or 20 miles and I was on the throttle then I felt like this pushback at upper speeds, it's too smooth. Sounds good though. In that same mode, it's essentially launch control and also drift mode. So when I want to be on the throttle here, let's just go on the throttle and the back end comes out. Oh, pretty nice. Very controllable though. Considering this is all wheel drive. So think about this for a second. You're buying an all wheel drive car that has drift mode that can transfer 100% of power to the rear wheels. That is awesome to have. You don't have to buy a rear wheel drive car because in the Stinger you can buy rear wheel drive or all wheel drive for Canadians and that's the deal. But in this one, all wheel drive and you still get the fun times. That's the whole key. You get the fun times. And this thing on the outside looks like a luxury car, but the inside is sporty and the drivetrain is sporty. Pretty awesome. One of the other cars we reviewed is the M340 and that's very similar to this in terms of competitiveness, but what this one does is it offers a lot more luxury. That's a lot harder on your back. I found no matter what mode I was in, I found it was fairly stiff. This doesn't feel that way. This is 
not as polarizing. There's different polar extremes, but I find that this is just more luxury and it feels a bit softer all the way around, except for the steering. This steering is very direct. Not as direct as the M340, but it's still very, very good. And that's what they do very well. I find that Kia Genesis, Hyundai products, more so Kia, we've done a ton of Kias, and that obviously the steering and all that stuff kind of similar to what this is. It's very direct and it's just that got a good sort of center feel. It always pulls back to center very easily. And there was the power band I was talking about, 25 RPM on the throttle. It just got a good mid-range pull. This thing does. Makes me feel very confident around corners. And I got Brembo, so I know I have good brakes that aren't gonna need replacing after 5,000 miles or 7,000 kilometers of hammer. So this is kind of like an S4. I'd say an S4 is maybe a hair more insulated. This one gives you a little bit more noise that you can hear. And again, you can change the intensity of the plumbed in sound. This is completely off. I could plumb it in, but just kind of annoying. Even though it sounds even more exhilarating and more exciting with it on. It doesn't sound fake, but I just leave all that stuff off. I just want the pure thrill of the car. Um, this has a lighter feeling than the S4. I find that this is a lighter, it feels like a lighter car. And I found that with the SUV version, the G70, GV70, and even the GV80. The GV80 was really funny. We were driving um, to a friend's cottage, and I just found that that thing at like 140 kilometers an hour just felt so smooth, smoother than the Q7. And the same with this. This at higher speed feels better than an S4, which sounds crazy. I know it doesn't sound real, and I feel like I'm advertising for them or something, but it's not. It's the truth. The faster you go on this, the better it feels, and that's very typical of German cars, but this does the same thing just better priced and more unique looking than nobody has. And here's the thing about German cars, and this is the truth, is the German cars over the last five to seven years have opened up the bottom. They've sold cars with all the different, you know, options that anybody can afford. But with this specific case, it opens the door to let other brands in, and that's what it's done at a lower price point. So that's the only thing with the drive modes is as I'm cruising here at 50 miles an hour, now I'm in comfort and if I switch it over to sport, there it is, it just went up a little bit. Not as, ag as aggressive as I wanted to. Also when it's downshifting, the downshifting feels a little bit late. But again, this is not probably, t it, it's a hard one because I find that yes, they're giving you all the sporty stuff, but it's not ultra sporty because then it'll be uncomfortable and the transmission would, too, would be too notchy. So this is a fairly smooth transmission yeah, it's so hard to kind of put this in that like, I find that it probably leans more towards luxury. And that's why for me, it's probably a better daily driver than the C43, I don't think is the best daily driver. I think the S4 out of it all, out of that little click, I think it will be the best daily driver. And I think this is kind of on par with it. And I really felt that at night when I got in, I just wanted to zip around town. I felt that this was really, really good at it. Steering was awesome. I just thought the steering was good. Suspension is not overly firm. I definitely got to break my back in this thing. But then when I go into different modes, I'm expecting more, right? Because I'm used to that kind of concept of German. Um, and then when I close the door, I kind of expect a little bit more. But then I understand that price point difference and that uniqueness of it. So it's like putting that all together and trying to figure out if this is the car for you. And that's really what it comes down to. It gives you that alternative, right, that you want. And the badging now is not as like, oh, that's a Hyundai or a Kia. No, it's a Genesis a lot of like cool pieces to mix in and as they make more products and a lot of guys are saying I want to see something more sporty or a more performance coupe because they have all these pieces together and yes that is true we probably want something with more power but price yeah price hope you enjoyed this video if you did subscribe and as always thanks for watching